Hey y'all out there. I hope you enjoyed my training tapes. Take it to make your skills better. You know, whether you box or not, doesn't matter. You can take it, learn from it, and uh, share it with your friends. And um, it's my gift to you. Big D Boxing Page, baby. Stands. How do you get into a basic boxing stance? Okay, let me break that down real quick. Big D can break that down real quick without standing up. Uh, basically, uh, let's start from the ground up. Basically, your feet, if I'm fighting you right here, all right, I'm not going to have my feet square. I'm going to have them kind of sideways. I want to fight you sideways. I want to fight you like this, okay, because you hit me in my chest and everything real hard. So what I want to do is line my feet instead of the way that is, sideways. So if my feet are sideways, that allows me to turn sideways. So it almost gives me a shoulder. So when you throw punches, they skin me instead of stick, okay? So the more you line your feet sideways, all right, the, uh, the, the, the more the punch skin you. Now, your back feet and your left feet, your back feet should be slightly over your left feet by a little bit if these were your two feet. Can you see how this stick out just a little bit? So you don't want to never have that back feet behind you like that because it's automatically off balance, okay? You don't want to have it even, but slightly over should be your back foot, all right? And it should be off the ground, something like that. It should never be flat because then you move slow, even my hands slow. But when it's up like that, see, it's quicker. So your feet are quicker, all right? So you're almost in a squat position. Sitting down is what we call it. So when we start playing with the hands upstairs, your power hand or the hand that's in the back, if your right hand is on the side, I'm going to go with this hand. Your power hand should belong right in the middle of your face. Now, some people put it right here and put it right here, but fundamentally, it should just rest right here. So when they throw a punch, you don't have to move. It's automatic defense, all right? And also, too, you can open up your glove, and it covers more of your face. So the three spots you don't want to get hit is your tempo, back here, by here, knock your equilibrium behind the ear and your chin. So on defense, you can just open up your hand. You just open up your hand. Instead of being right here, you got to bring your hand up and try to punch. That's doing a lot for nothing. Okay, fundamentally, you starting out, just leave your hand right here, all right? And your lead hand or your jab hand is slightly out front. The reason why it's slightly out front because it's closer to them. So if you don't want to jab from way back here, look how far that's got to go. That's got to go way far. So you kind of cheat. You can always bring your hand back for defense. Bring your hand back for defense. Until then, your hand kind of just goes out. So that's your basic fight stance. We're talking about balance. All right, balance is very, very, very important, especially starting off. And uh, once you got your basic stance down, the key is to be punching and staying on balance. It's easy to stay on balance just sitting here. But once you start swinging, all of a sudden, okay, all everything is going every which way. Uh, 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 let's break down why you see people don't have great balance. First of all, if you throw in punches and you overextend them, you're going to be off balance. In other words, let's say I throw a hook and I throw it past my shoulder, this shoulder. See, I'm automatically off balance. When you're fighting or when you're throwing punches, hit or miss, you got to stop right there. It's no point in you too far, then you too far. So you should be punching like this instead of like so that plays with your balance people try to do too much when they punch it's not a lot of hard work to punch you just turn it but people want to drop their hand they want to throw it hard they want to kill it you know what i mean so they don't get a sense of their balance also, too, when they're trying to hit the heavy bag or something like that, because the bag is over there, they naturally want to lean over and try to punch. No, you should just sit down in your own space 
and fight it from a distance, keeping your balance. Because you want to keep your head back. You don't want to be punching and bring your head towards your opponent. You want to punch and pivot and keep your head back and maintain your balance. Okay? So you want to punch in your own space. You don't want to be leaning on him punching. You want to sit down, punch in your own space. There's a thing that I like to uh, train some of my young fighters uh, when we teach them how to generate balance. And that's basically punching a box. Okay? So when you start now, like you see some people, they, they jab it, it's way up here and it's way over here next time, it's way, you know what I'm saying, they hook and it's, it's you know what I'm saying, they shadow boxing, but it's, it looks, it looks, it looks everywhere. But what you should be doing is learn how to punch in a box. It's boom. Like all my shots are in this box. Boom. So I'm able to keep my balance because I'm not crossing over. So I'm always centered what I'm doing. I'm not trying to lean and hit. I'm just punching in my own space. So I'm maintaining my balance. Okay. I match that up with my footwork and match my hands with it. Now I'm a com complete fighter around the ring moving in my own space because I have great balance. We're going to talk about head movements. All right? Head movements. What is that? Oh, that's very important. All right, look. When you in front of a man, he in front of you. You guys are boxing. What you don't want to do is just be in front of him, start punching, be in front of him again, punch, you know, be in front of him. That's an easy target. Even you just hit me four times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But... The, the, the way to do it, it, it when you're in front of a man, you constantly head movement. So what am I doing by moving my head? Basically, I'm slipping. So if you watch one of my other tapes, one, you'll see slip. So I'm moving side to side off of my off the line. So if you're trying to throw a punch, I'm on this side, this side, this side, this side. I might stay on the same side a couple of times. You know what I mean? I might delay just to keep y'all balanced and then go back. So, okay, so I might roll. You look at that too. You might roll and I'm off the line, off the line. So as I'm coming to fight you in my stance, I'm moving my head. So I'm slipping, rolling. Now I ain't doing them both at the same time. Either it's going to be a roll or a slip. Okay, it can't be in the middle. You get cracked, okay? Rolls are used, slips are more V-shaped. So these are the angles that you use to keep from hitting you. So basically, you're in the front of a man, head movement. So when, when you're moving your head to this side, you basically scanning this side of the body. <laughs> what? Oh, I got y'all. I got y'all. Look, for you experienced fighters, when you move in your head, they're basically, when you get to another level, you're using that as a weapon too. So when you're using your head working, you should be scanning that part of the body. So when you still, when you when you over here looking, you should be looking to see what to hit. Uh, you should be rolling and looking. Not just moving your head just because you dodge and punch it. No, you calculating. This is a mind game. Boxing is a game of controlling people, hypnotizing people. So if I can be good at my head move instead of always fast, learn to slow you down by going slow, and then I break out with something. So now I'm hypnotizing with my head movement. I'm making my head movements a weapon, okay? So you always want to move your head, but you don't want to be predictable, okay? So you got rolls, you got slips, okay? You got slow, you got calculated, you're looking, scanning, you're looking to set up the jab off your head movement, you're looking to set up the right hand off your head, you're using hands or whatever off your head movement. So head movements is a great thing to use in boxing. We're going to talk about conditioning. Oh, that's a good one. Conditioning. Conditioning consists of a lot of things and when it comes to boxing. Um, not only, we'll start with the basics, all right? We'll start from the bottom up. Your basic young fighter going to come to the gym. We want them to start basically 
slow running, jogging, okay, maybe a mile starting off, two to three as they get into it about their third or fourth month. Uh, we're also going to do a lot of calisthenics like push-ups, sit-ups, maybe pull-ups, pushing a tire, a hacksaw, uh, yeah, it's a thousand sit-up drills, you know what I mean? As you progress in boxing, your conditioning becomes more and more. Uh, heavy people coming into boxing start losing weight like rapidly, you know, if you're real heavy. Uh, even chubby people or, you know, people a little thick, they start losing weight because of the conditioning. Now, once you start getting into fight mode, uh, yeah, you start picking up your running to about three to four miles maybe every other day or two or three times a day. You start mixing them with some what they call sprinting recovery. That's sprinting real fast, resting for a short period of time, sprinting real fast and resting for a short period of time. Uh, you start mixing that in, uh, the calisthenics and the pull-ups. So you see boxers have a certain physique. And basically, you see how they, the reason why they build like that, because some of the exercises that they go through as they prepare for fights and as they develop into the fight world, you see the champions all have a certain type of a build. Okay, that's because of conditioning. Now, once you start fighting into, um, you know, championship, uh, uh, professional, it picks up quite a bit. Um, Amateurs have their way. They only fight three rounds, so they only push their bodies for uh, for so much. But a pro fighter fights 12 rounds. That's a lot of rounds. Uh, if you've never been in the ring before, three minutes is a long time to be trying to fight somebody. All right? And you got to do that 12 different times. So your conditioning really, really picks up. You might start running mountains and start doing high altitude training. You start maybe training 2 o'clock in the morning training. You may have a personal trainer besides your regular boxing workout that you do. So you go through a boxing workout. Then you work with a personal trainer. Then you run 3, 4 miles. And that's in one day, every day, preparing for a fight. So... It, 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 the, 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 the conditioning on a championship level is 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 grueling. Plus, he's sparring maybe uh, at least two three times a week. With all of that, what I said, so uh, conditioning allows you to do a lot though in the ring. When you're in shape, you could just do more things. You could do more things in sparring. You could try things because. Because you're, you're in condition. You know, when when the other guy is in his third, fourth round, he's slowing down. You're still feeling pretty fresh. So you can start doing real nice maneuvers on him. So it's important to be in condition even if you're sparring because when that other guy gets tired, you really want to take advantage of that situation. You don't want to be the first one to get tired in the ring because that's a lonely feeling. And he feeling good coming at you. Who wants to be there? All right, so conditioning. You're going to like this topic. I promise you, sharp punching. Oh, <laughs> sharp punching. What do they mean by sharp punching? What's the advantage of being a sharp puncher? How do you get to be a sharp puncher? Oh, you're going to like this one because I'm going to break it down. I'm going to help some of y'all career right here. All right. A sharp puncher. Let's take a hook, for example. I'm going to throw it like 80% of the fighters throw it. Just basic, okay? What they'll do is they'll hit, all right? I just made contact. And then they'll handle the bring right here. And then they'll bring it back. So the punch is boom. Okay, and then the hand goes right here, and then they bring it back. So it looks like this. Boom, they make contact. Okay, boom. But I already made contact, but they hand it. Okay, what a sharp puncher would do is he'll make contact, and he'll take a direct line back. Sharp, boom. Okay, you won't see the, the delay of time here and here. That's, that's a lot of delay of time right there. So a sharp puncher is bang, and it's right back. All right? Also, too... <laughs> A sharp puncher is going to be able to punch accuracy because if the, 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 the if he's trying to hit this target, he's not going to, you see what I just did? 
Most fighters going to try to hit the... So they wind back trying... A sharp puncher is just punching forward. All his punches is just forward. He don't cock it back at all. So when he sees something, he just went forward. So what a lot of fighters will do, they'll drop their hand to punch. See that? Look at that. They don't know they're doing that, but they punch like that. Well, a sharp puncher, he just, boom, he already hit you. So see this hand, a sharp punch, he, it's, everything is sharp. So me to this, with another puncher, I'm going to punch to the spot right here with this hand. Okay? What another puncher do, he'll punch like this to the spot. A sharp puncher punching straight to the spot. Even the hooks. When people throw hooks and they delay it, it keeps it from, but a sharp puncher already there. The punch is there because when your wrist is bad versus sharp puncher, it didn't got there that much quicker, okay? So now the other punch is there quicker too. Instead of this, look, look how fast a sharp puncher is quicker, is sharper. He's punching forward. So his punches are able to get to the spot quicker and it comes back to his face quicker. Even if you throw a shot to the body. So you throw a shot to the body and you follow through somewhere. Or you throw it right here and you follow through. So your follow through is leaning you. But a sharp puncher is here and he's back to a stand. He's taking that shot and he's back. Even if he let three go. Three, four, sharp punches versus that's not sharp, okay? This is sharp, sharp, four punches. This same combination, not sharp. Sharp punches, very important in boxing. Let's talk about body shots. Oh, body shots. What is a body shot? Where where to hit him at on the body? And, and how does that affect the fighting ring when he's been hit with some good body shots? All right, let's break all that down. Body shots. Body shots are, are deadly. Like, seriously. You got some people that can really take it to the head all day. You ain't gonna never knock them out. But the body... <laughs> you hit him in the stomach, that's a whole nother game, all right? A lot of people, you see them in the ring, they they head hunt. They just looking to hit him in the head. They don't really understand the body is just as effective and it's a bigger target. Look how little my head is. Look at my big old body. You going to tell which one harder to hit. So why fighters head hunt, I'm not sure. But what fighters should be doing is basically off of their jab, scanning the body. Don't look for the head. You always scan into body and you put your fist in a hole that you see. Whatever hole it is. Big D gonna make a champion out of one of y'all. All right? But no, seriously, that's what it is. So most of your holes are created in the body. Okay, so let's break down spots that you do want to hit that's more effective than others. Let's go with the chest. That hurt. I mean, hurt, hurt, hurt. All right? You get drill them right there up the middle. Forget drill them in the face. Hit them in the chest. Most times, they duck into it. So this is always an effective place to, to throw a punch. All right? Uh, the liver on the right side of your body. You hit them right there. All right, it lock up the whole side and they ain't moving. They ain't not getting up. That's it. Liver shots. You got your kidneys on both sides. It's not in the front. They're more in the back. Where you piss at? All right, make them piss blood when they go home. Boxing. It happens, all right? So you got vulnerable spots in your body that's very effective. Now, where are the places to hit on the body? Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. Look. Here, here, this hurts, shoulder, you keep hitting them right here. You got a good jab, hard hit the face, keep hitting them on the shoulders. See how many times he's swinging too. It's a body shot, all right? This is a body, this is a body shot. All of this stuff, if he don't, you can up jab, these are body shots anywhere. So when you're boxing, just find a hole, put your glove in it. You know what I'm saying? And it'll open up the head shots, uh, especially off the jab. 
You can throw the one, two down the middle or the one, two to the kidney shot around the elbow. They got an elbow. See this elbow? Throw the punch around there to the kidney. So he got to start adjusting his hand. So that creates an opening. You keep doing it, it creates an opening. Okay? Now we got to defend that shot. That's where the hook come. He defend that. He throw that, then the hook come. All right? So when you start throwing body shots, it starts opening up head shots. Also, too, let's say you boxing and you hurt a man. Or you see a man, he kind of, you hit him with a good shot, he start buckling. Don't hit him in the head. You know, you, you know that's, you go finish him off to that. No, you finish him to the body. He going to protect his head. He going to do that because he hurt. He ain't like, he ain't, he, ain't do, he ain't doing that no more. He hurt. So he going to, and that's where you attack the body. Three, four good shots. Then you finish up in the head and you get him out of there. Okay? That's an experienced fighter. So, always learn how to throw body shots. Here go a great topic. Trying to be Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> no offense, Floyd, because I love you as a fighter. Even when I met you and I love you today, no offense. The fans love you too. That's why they try to emulate you. But let me save some fighters' careers right here, okay? Listen, let me break this down for real. Floyd's a great fighter. It's only one Floyd. You're not going to be Floyd. You're going to be whoever you're going to be, but you're not going to be Floyd. Floyd's style was taught to him at a young age. His daddy and his uncle's box. They were trainers. Floyd grew up in boxing. So he has a fundamental, basic way of fighting this way, such as bringing the shoulders up. It's a lot of... I'm not going to break down his style, okay? But he he fundamentally got that style down pat. You guys just, just trying to be like him wasn't taught the way he was taught. And the trainer that you with now wasn't taught the way he was taught. So you're making it up. You don't have the fundamental principles behind trying to be Floyd. So you're basically not going to be successful. He's been doing it since he was a, a, a kid. Okay? So don't start boxing your way and in two seconds or a, a minute during a fight, you, all of a sudden you you this. Okay? Because that's enough time to, to go right over and, and, and that's it. Because you don't understand the mechanics or the fundamentals or the basic behind his style. So whoever's out there that's competing or want to compete, be yourself and master your style. And somebody else will emulate your style. It's just too many holes in the defense to be playing in the ring like that. When you're in your ring, work on your craft. Learn how to be you. Don't get caught trying to be cute. I've seen it how many times. You know, I can't even count how many times I see people drop their hands and get clocked. When they never had to take their punch if they just stayed who they was. Okay? So, with all respect to whoever's listening, because I respect all, especially Mr. Mayweather, utmost respect. But please, as young fighters out there, just try to be yourself. Keep your hands up. Do what the trainer asks you to do. And you'll have a successful career. Because basically, your trainer should teach you the real boxing fundamentals. If he's not going over the fundamentals with you the way you think they should be going, 
then you keep watching my videos over and over and over again because all I'm doing is just breaking down fundamentals. Okay? Be yourself. Hello, hello out there. We're going to talk about something that I just can't teach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've been sitting here teaching, teaching, teaching. But this next subject, I can't teach. But I'm going to explain it to you best I can. And that is heart. No matter what, it comes down to a person and what he made of. Some people just have a heart of gold. Some people, some people, y'all hear that expression. Now, what does it mean? What do you mean, D? What do you mean when they say I got a big heart? D, what do you mean? You the expert. You know all this. D, what do you mean by heart? This is what I mean by heart. Somebody who takes the definition of heart. Let's say you. All y'all out there. Okay, what's your definition of heart? Okay, well his definition of heart is more than yours. <laughs> Period. He gonna try harder no matter what you do. Okay, when a person got that, you gonna have to kill him. He don't care. You think you tell he tough. He gonna prove it. He don't care. He, listen, the, the, when a man got heart, you, you, look, you can't stop that man. That man, that man willing to die. Some people, some people play, which is unfortunate, but boxing is a brutal gladiator, <laughs> a mental sport. You got some people, you could see them on the way down, they just come, you know, they may not have the best skill, they may not have the best trainer, they may not, but they may not even train hard. But you put them in a corner in any situation, it ain't got to be boxing. He just going to try harder. He just ain't going to never give up. I don't, his leg will come off, he's still going to keep going. He just, his, his mind is so driven that he going to over conquer the hill until physically it can't happen. So that's a person that just believes in itself and he don't care what you say. He don't care how you think about it. He don't care how you feel. He believe in him. He see him. He go through him. He ask him. He, you going to agree with him because he going to make you agree with him. And he just one of those thinkers that he just, he, his, his, he wears his soul from the inside. You know, we all, you know, out here, but his, he can climb up in here deep and reach into a situation, get himself out of He going to, so that's a person with tremendous heart. Somebody that's never going to stop, no matter how tough you think you are. He believe he tougher, no matter, even if you proving it to him at the time, he ain't going to never stop believing. All right? So that's something, I'm, I'm sorry. You just can't teach. Some people are born with that. Okay? Can't teach that. Heart. Hey, y'all. Boxing is a straight mental game. Period. 85% of everything in boxing is mental. Let me break it down. <laughs> y'all like that? Let me, let me break it down. <laughs> let, me, let me break it down. So let me go ahead and break it down. Mental. What do I mean by mental? Okay. Look. Some people mind are just stronger than others. So in other words, let's say, let's say hit the bag. How long can you hit the bag? Okay. The average person really seriously can't hit that bag no more in 10 minutes straight. Just straight. Somebody with a strong mind can do that bag for an hour. Now he feels the same as the other guy who stopped at 10 minutes and even at 20 and 30, he feel all that pain. But his mind is so strong, he can overcome that pain and keep going. 
His mind is strong. Okay, how does he how does he do that? How you block that pain out? Basically, they think about other things. They don't think about the pain that's involved. Like you can see, you can see, you can see in a, a, a team of uh, let's say a team of a boxers all hitting the bag. You got a coach right there with a whistle. You know, tell them go. You know, and they all punching hard. You know, hard for one minute. Go. Some people gonna be stretching their arms out. Some people gonna be oh, cause some people. You know what I mean? When they take their money, some people gonna be lean. They take their one minute. Some people, and then you gonna find that one person who ain't gonna say nothing, who ain't gonna lean all over. He ain't gonna drink no water. Now he feel the same as all other, all seven of other people. But his mind is so strong that he just blocks it all out. He he understands it's a day of boxing. He understands it's just part of the workout. He understands this is what it takes to get me to the top. He's mentally strong. Even in the ring, when they're moving around and they spawn or they're into a fight, and they're in a tough situation, their mind is so strong they can overwhelm the other person, even with equal ability. Their mind is overpowering. They can make you give. Earl Spence is great at it. Their mind is so strong that while he's fighting, he's telling himself, I'm going to make you quit. You're going to quit. He may not say it, but to himself, that's what he's doing. Their mind becomes so powerful, they can just do more. Their awareness is, is greater. They're aware of things that the average person just don't see. They could be focused on this and they can see all that happening and never lose focus on this and see that going on over there. Well, most people just got to focus on this or just got to focus on body. They can see two, three, four things happening at once because of their mind is more powerful. They're more dexterity because they can do two things at once. You know what I mean? When, when you teach them something, they're able to comprehend it more better than somebody else that's just average. So what makes what happens, they become a great fighter because of their mind is real powerful. Listen, boxing's 85% mental. If you have that strong mind like that and you do that mind like that every single day, you think about how good a person to be. You think about it. A person with a powerful mind like that that trains every day, how good he going to be? So the, the game is mental. People come in every day, they tired, whatever, they come home from work, whatever. Okay, but the other guy, he tired too, but when he hit that gym, he clicks to another gear and his mind takes control. So in those days, be your best days in learning when you get through those type of days. Okay, so the the, the boxing game is is really a, a real serious mental game. Even outside of the ring, when you start talking business and money and taking fights and, and picking the right trainer or picking the right team or knowing that's not who you should be with and no, I shouldn't be going out partying and drinking and, you know, that's all mental. You know, people, I had an argument the other day. Talking about a fighter, if he was in his prime, if he wouldn't have been doing this, and that's part of it. If you live in foul, you take it in the gym, you take it into the fight, that's part of it. So your mind controls all that. If you dedicate it, you don't need it. What you doing it for? Okay? So if if you really don't believe in yourself, you ain't going to get to the top, then you're going to cheat and party. But if you believe you can make it all the way, then you keep your mind fresh and on the prize. Okay? So, boxing. For everybody that's out there listening to me, everything is 85% mental. So every day, come to the gym, focus, and you too can be a champion. <laughs> hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. I got a good topic. You're going to like this one. Why do fighters fight? <laughs> I thought you liked that one. All right, let me let me kind of set that up. Why do a fighter fight? Um, besides coming to the gym and all that and how he got there, why does he fight? Um, well, 
just the they love it. Simply. Some people you love playing basketball, right? Yeah, I, you love dancing, right? Some of you love drinking. People love stuff. Well, people love fighting, too. It's just weird. Now, what kind of mind did that that it, uh, it takes to want to fight? I will admit, it, it's a it's a different kind of mind. But most fighters are nice people. Most fighters don't want to fight on the street. That doesn't make sense to them because boxers are trained to fight not mad or angry. They're trained to fight relaxed and calm. So yelling and fighting in the street, that really doesn't make sense to a boxer. You know, his thing is control. So chaotic, that takes a fighter basically out of his element. So you'll find, unless you see young fighters starting off and they was coming up fighting and they got in the box and they haven't made that crossover, you see those kind of people get into it. But basically, once you reach a level in boxing, you really ain't really trying to uh, fight on the streets or nothing like that. But you love to fight. So you, you... The people in the gym, you know they're your friends. You talk to them, you hug them. You might be a cousin, whatever. You kick it, you you play diamonds together, you run together, but you fight each other. You know what I mean? All the time, two, three times a week, sometimes. You know, and yes, you're going hard sometimes. You try to knock him, you try to knock you, but out the ring, y'all y'all buddies, you friends. So that's a boxer's thinking. You know, he he just love to fight. When he's not fighting, he, he's mad. If he has a fight and the fight drops out, uh, they get very angry because they want to fight. Or they trying to start off their pro career. They had a certain age. I got to go. You know what I mean? So they rush themselves into a fight. They just want to fight. You know what I mean? I got I to gotta fight. So they'll go into a situation where they know they the underdog, but they still want to fight. They believe in themselves. They believe they can. People, a, a boxer is a a person that's he's like he's a warrior. You know, he's just a warrior. He's a warrior inside. And and this, you see people in stores. You see them just shadow boxing to themselves at the line to check out. They can't help it. They have a fighter's mentality that's built up in there, and that's all they think about is. You know what I mean? Where somebody else is thinking about, you know, you know, she fine. He thinking about one too. You know what I mean? Nah, he thinking about the one, the fine girl. But he, you know, his mind is on hitting something. So it takes a special person to to to, to fight or to want to be a fighter because it's two two types of fighters. It, one that beats everybody else up and one that gets beat up all the time. That's it. And it's only like 20% of them. So why does 80% fight? Because it's in their blood. It's, 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 it's just it's just they love. It's just the way they express themselves. It's just, it's just that's how they get to, that's how they block all they, you know, the, the woman nagging them or they, they problems or whatever, that's they let out. That's they escape. That's they, you know, that's where they feel comfortable. That's they home. That's where they, you know, yeah, it sounds weird. You know, some people go to church. Well, a, a boxer, you know, that's his, you know, church. That's where he go for comfort. So even when you try to take a boxer out of boxing for a long time and he miss it, if he even walks into a gym, as long as he's healthy enough, that taste of calling right back. So it's dangerous once a fighter leave and he call himself going to come back a year later just to look at it. No, nah, that love, that taste of, of drawing right back into it. Next thing you know, he's trying to make a comeback. So it's just... It's just something that it's a mechanism that's built inside the person that, you know, that, you know, that, you know, it's that people cheering, you know, people watching, people, you know, it's, it's you against him and just, you know, I can get it. It's just that, that macho man, warrior, savage, gladiator, 
you know, been going on since the beginning of time. Okay, so it's modified to what they call a boxer. Okay, why do they call it boxing? Okay, why they call it boxing? <laughs> why? Why? Okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Because it's fighting in a square circle. Okay, so you able to hit them without you being hit. That's the art of boxing. Okay, that's a skill in itself. So, why do people box? Because they... Hey, y'all. This subject right here. This subject right here. Woo-wee! But somebody's got to do it. Might as well be Big D boxing pain, baby. Big D about to sock it to you right now. Here we go. Hold your breath. Does boxing give you brain damage or does it damage your body? We're going to kind of discuss that a little bit. Break that down to you. <laughs> Ooh-wee. Hope I don't get in trouble, y'all. I mean, well, but somebody got to break it down. Uh, let's start like this. Any athlete in any sport doing anything, you do it for a number of years till you're 30, 39, 42 years old, you're going to have some damage. I don't care if you ever use your head or not. Okay, your hips, your knees, okay, uh, it doesn't matter. Some, some on your body is going to be different than a person who didn't go through the wears and tears of competition and competing for all those years. So let's start there first, all right? Um, uh, when it comes to damage to the body, boxers get punched upside the head, you know, quite a bit. You want to know how much? Um, if you want to start amateurs, uh, you know they may they may fight. You know some amateurs got a hundred fights, some two hundred, some fifty. Uh, as you fighting, you like to be fighting at least six times a year. You might be sparring at least two three times a week. If you're not taking off, that's pretty consistent. If you do take off, then depending on how much time you took off during that time. It, it uh, vary, so you're constantly getting hit to the head, to the body, to the stomach, to the liver, okay, to your kidneys, on your chest, to your heart. So yeah, uh, you wearing headgear, you got on gloves, uh, but still, that's 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 a force of contact to the body, okay. So uh, uh, over over a period of time, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna matter. Um, but you take football players, you take soccer players constantly hitting the ball upside the head just over and over and over and over and over and trying to do it and score the goals. So they're, they're using the head. Football players, even though they got the new techniques now that's different than when I grew up, but they try to be more safety cars where you can't leave with your head first. But you rough and tumble. I ain't trying to run at nobody full speed. You kidding me? I'd rather dodge a punch. So teach his own. All right? But... You know, they, they do a lot of contact with your head. There's, there's other sports as well. So you want to compare it to boxing. Yeah, they all will have a certain amount of damage uh, to you. Uh, can you tell when a fighter's experiencing damage? Uh, yeah, yeah, bottom line is yeah. Uh, you could take somebody who's starting off and, you know, have them be normal and then over a period of time, yeah, you can start seeing certain things. Uh, maybe like that, their speech will start, you know, slurring a little bit. It, it's a slow, you know what I mean? But, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm, I got very good awareness. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I've seen it, you know what I mean? Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, retired fighters, what they look like, how they walk, uh, who helps them as they get around. I see, uh, you know, the effects of that. You know, uh, um, even current fighters um, that you see, um, they don't know they're affected. Everybody thinks they're normal. Even I think I'm normal, but some people might think I'm crazy. But, you know, again, teach his own. But if you look into a fighter's eyes, you can kind of see, you know, uh, uh, where he's at and how, how much punches that he can take. Let me, let me share a secret with you real quick. Uh, the eyes tell a story. I don't care in any situation, in a ring, whatever. 
Uh, anytime you look at somebody, you can tell they're happy, sad, they punch, hurt, tired, whatever. So the eyes tell a story. So, uh, yeah, sometimes you can see when they walk in the ring or walk out the ring, you know, how they looking. You know what I mean? You have to be really astute to pick up on it. But, uh, yeah, you see those kind of effects. Uh, pain, they're coming back, reoccurring type injuries and trying to fight or through those injuries, trying to get through a title bout or a big important bout, you know what I mean? Or seeing chiropractors or um, next to the fighters or, you know, uh, they have to go see a doctor doing some injury during the time of uh, or training. You see that? <clears throat> you see that a lot. So um, there's always some type of damage. Um, is there a possibility that a young fighter can... Um, you know, end up like, you know, I don't, man, you know, I want to end up, uh, uh, you know, shaky or as they walk. Um, you know, let's cut to the chase, let's be for real. Yeah, it's always a risk. Um, boxing's a dangerous sport. Uh, just because you get in that ring and sparring don't mean you finna come out that sparring session. You know, there's been a, plenty of people who sparred and, you know, that was it. So, you know, boxing, that's boxing. You you know what you sign up for. You know, boxing is not like, that's not like play basketball. You know what I mean? You don't play boxing. You know, boxing for real. Either you're going to be a boxer, you go 100%, or you, you know, you kind of want to leave that sport alone. You know what I mean? So, yeah, there's there's there's, there's a lot of reward to, to boxing, as you can see. You know, you see a lot of boxers walk around with nice cars and jewelry and got their entourage and on TV and fame and you know, they got their success, so, you know, it's it's risk-reward. You know, you you know what you sign up for, you know, day one, you get it up, hip sit upside your head, you figure out pretty quick, I don't like that, that hurt. So if you come back and you don't, you know what I mean? So, uh, of course, there's damage to uh, the body, to the head in boxing, especially heavyweights, you know what I mean? Because... Even though they get hit less, they get much hit much harder. The bigger the guy, the harder the force. The head is just a head, period. You know what I mean? So, you know, the big guys get hit hard. You know what I mean? So, it don't take but a couple big shots and they going down. So, you know, you do that three, four times a year. And, you know, you box for eight years. You know what I mean? Even though you retire, you got to walk around with that. All right? So, if you want to discuss how it go, well, if you think about it, if you get knocked down, knocked out, you know, you dizzy, whatever, you got to understand that's a bruise, right? You know, you hit yourself real hard, right? And it turned red, it's a bruise, right? Well, it's the same one, but it's inside your brain. It's a bruise, right? So what happens if you don't give a bruise time to heal and you keep hitting around the bruise all the time, but it's still a bruise, okay? How long did that take to heal, right? Right now, how long did it take to heal, right? You know, you see, gonna see it for like a week, but you boxing twice a week, so you still getting hit around all your bruises. So you you walking around with that way of life, all right? It's boxing. <laughs> Don't mean to bring it to you like that, but think about it. It's it's a bruise when you get hit, right? You don't just boom, you get hit, you wake up and it's a brand new day. No, you dizzy. You go home with a headache. You know what I mean? So. You know, it's going to be bruised until that heals. So you go back into the gym or you go back to the next day. Yeah, you stand it, but there's damage. All right. So bottom line, boxing, yes, there is damage to the body. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope maybe there's something that I said that you learned. Okay, so uh, enjoy, share it. Okay, use some of the techniques. And if you enjoy it, give me some feedback and maybe we can do it again. All right, bigdboxingpage.com. Thank you for watching.